Hello Wastelanders, Vlad here and today we're going to go over camp tricks that are still available for use after the Steel Rain update. Let's jump on in! So we're going to start things off simple and move more complex. This one we're going to start with a floating roof and to do that just edit it to an angled roof while attached to the wall. Remove your wall, edit that back to the starting point and now you can have a floating roof. Moving on from floating roofs, well, let's go to floating walls. The easiest way is with a door frame and then moving the foundation out from underneath. Uh, but maybe you want something taller in the sky, not just floating slightly above the ground. For that, you can build up and then switch these two door frames uh, above the starting point and then remove what is underneath them. Maybe you want a floating half wall, and for that I built this little A-frame. So it's just a um, full wall, half wall, roof on both sides. And for that, now we have that frame, we can delete one of our whole walls, remove our, uh, or edit our roof to be angled so it no longer attaches to that half wall, and then remove the roof, and we have a floating half wall. All right, now there is one other way, but you're going to have to have some atomic shop items here and that is the catwalks. And those actually are pretty cool because they allow you to build uh, downwards as well. I'll show you that here in a second. But there is a snap point for walls on these catwalks. And so you can attach your wall and then remove the catwalk and be left with a floating wall. Uh, like I said, you can also build downwards with these. They have a downward snap point. And so you can do the same thing. To achieve the look you're looking for. Now maybe you're looking to get some sort of floating structure and the simplest way is with the catwalks again and uh, I just be careful with this because once it's floating uh, it doesn't like to snap certain things. Uh, some things it'll say is red, it won't let you remove floor panels, things of that nature. So just know you're going to be fighting with the system if you do this. I don't recommend it but it is achievable. And now you have a set of floating stairs by removing that catwalk. It will allow you to build on top of that if you build in the correct order. Now if you want a full floating structure, um, I recommend using this method where you're using the roofs as your floors. And we're using all the tricks that I've shown you so far between the roofs and the floating walls. And uh, the hard part here is getting this last uh, wall that is supporting the structure out of the way. But if we edit our roof again to no longer be attached, we can remove it, make it back to being flat, and then slide it in to be the floor of our little simple structure here. Double-sided walls are still available, and you can do it with any set of the uh, walls. Uh, the ones that are the easiest are everything except for the wooden ones, the standard ones. And to get the standard ones, you're going to have to um, use the flamethrower trick or place them as other types of walls first and then switch them back to being your standard wood walls. So I'm uh, just showing that here on the screen. Uh, but all the other uh, sets will allow you to place these as long as they're in the middle of two foundations. Uh, once they are placed, you can remove one of the foundations on either side, uh, and it's not going to give you an error that something is floating. Now maybe uh, you don't want double full walls. Maybe you want doubled angled walls or double half walls. And for that, you will need to use the flamethrower to achieve. Uh, so place your half wall. Notice that it won't let you place the other half wall. Um, but if we move over to our turrets and traps, we can use our trusty flamethrower here to destroy that wall. And then once that is destroyed, we can put our other wall facing the other direction in place. And then we can repair the original one that we broke. And now you have double sided walls and this works for the angled ones as well. Now let's talk about floating objects. Floating objects um, may have their place in your camp. Um, so the easiest way is to use the conduit and I'm going to show you with this little 
um, generator. Now make sure when you place something on top of the conduit that it's actually on the conduit and it's not touching the uh, floor instead. Uh, but then you can move it to the top of your conduit, remove the supporting vertical structure, and you're left with your floating object sitting on the conduit. Now the next method involves using your power armor. This has been out around since the entire game came out. Uh, it still works. And uh, just place your power armor, put whatever you want to float on top of it, and then collect your power armor and you still have your floating object. Now last I'm going to show you the reverse merge and I've kind of built this structure as an example. Um, I got these three little tables stacked on top of each other and then this painting on the back end and uh, I did this so that I could place that picture and that it would attach to this one here in the middle. Let's make sure we grab the right thing. And then we're going to use our camp unit to do this trick and we're just going to place our little table on the camp unit and when it places notice how it drops down and you can keep repeating this until um, you get the right effect that you would like but what you can tell is that as that um, table drops down the painting actually stays in place so it gives the effect that it is now moving above the table and a lot of people use this as a flat screen TV. Now you can do this with many objects, it doesn't have to be for that type of trick. Um, if you want something floating uh, above things, then uh, the easiest way is with a rug. Just place the thing on the rug and then you can do the reverse merge by placing the rug on the camp unit and then the item will slowly start to float. And then you can place things in that space between the rug and the balloons there without it intersecting. So a good way to kind of uh, bring things together that maybe not necessarily would place together. All right, so thing, things that would go together that shouldn't go together, let's talk about merged items. And the simplest one is, we'll show you with this, uh, this little shelf. And you need to find a place in your camp where things kind of look like they're gonna place underneath the ground a little bit. And this doesn't work with all objects. The object needs to be able to jump to the surface when you place it. Notice like when I did place this one, the shelf jumped to the surface, but the stuff on the shelf stayed in place. And that allowed us to sink them into the shelf and look like they are sitting on the shelf. But again, not every object will do that jump back to the surface. So you'll have to do some experimentation to figure out if what you want to do works. The next way is by using the flamethrower to destroy one object and then you can sometimes place another object uh, inside of it where it doesn't seem like it's colliding uh, according to the build menu and then repair the original object. Now we have a grill here in that little cabinet. Now the next method is going to be with these little spike board traps and I placed Santa Claus to where it is sitting on the little spring part of the trap. Notice he comes up a little bit instead of sitting flat on the foundation. Uh, but if we destroy this trap, then you'll notice Santa Claus disappears because that object is broken. And then we can move our little snowman in place. It won't let me place it on the spring because it doesn't let you place things on broken objects, uh, but we can put him close. And then now we have kind of Santa Claus merged with our snowman. Uh, you can find a more practical use for this yourself, uh, but I'm just showing the concept. And then maybe you want to place things through walls. And so this is just the um, flamethrower trick applied to the walls. Now when you do this, I, I prefer to use the full wooden one because when it breaks, you have a nice clean frame uh, where you can place anything in the middle. I'm going to put this TV in the way and repair things just so you can see. And then you can see this TV is now embedded between the wall as it gets repaired. You can use that for various effects yourself. All right, now another item, and I'm not very good at it, is merging things into the foundation. And for that, you kind of need a sloped area of your camp, but then pick up the foundation once your item is on top of it, and then kind of pull it underneath your character and place it again. I'm getting a little bit of a sinking effect here, but I find it easier when I start from the edge where I am below the top level of the foundation and then placing it. 
notice I'm getting a lot better syncing when I do that. And like I said, I'm pretty terrible at this. I see people that do this a lot more efficiently than I do, um, but I can achieve the results I want. As long as you have the little sloped area, you can sink things into the foundation too. Now let's talk about stairs again. Um, maybe you want some stairs or to build something in the air that isn't attached to a foundation, um, but you still want stairs going up to it from the ground level. So do that, build yourself some foundations next to each other and then place your stairs going up to them and then it'll let you remove the foundation that the stairs are attached to as long as the other foundations are still adjacent to the original so you can then place an upper floor on there you could place some other stairs uh, to build upwards just know that if you do do this and you build on the upper platform, you are going to run into issues with the floors not being able to be pulled down, uh, possibly walls, uh, saying that, you know, removing it would make this structure inaccessible type thing. You can get around that by building with the structure still attached to the foundation first, get everything in place, and then make removing that foundation the last step of the process. Now let's talk about flipping foundations, which leads to merged foundations. For that, we're going to need a blueprint. And we're going to start simple just so you get the concept. And here we have two foundations in the wall. I'm going to remove the foundation that is technically attached to that wall so that the wallpaper side is facing away from this, the remaining foundation. And then we're going to blueprint that. And we'll just name it temp1 so we can move on. All right, now notice when we go and place this blueprint, we gotta find it first, what happens when we place it. All right, so notice that instead of placing it the way we actually blueprinted it, it flips that foundation to attach to the wall. And you can use this concept in a wide array of blueprints, like this one, which is in uh, an hexagon or octagon and then it merges all of these foundations that were outside by flipping them inside to connect to these walls. Now maybe you don't want to build round stuff, maybe you want to do other things. It has its uses for other things such as this stage. You can't place this stage going through foundations normally uh, but with this merge trick you can get them to sit in between some foundations and now you can build your stage inside or have a very neat look to your stage even if you do plan on keeping it outside. And then for a more advanced thing, you can get stairs that are flush with your walls by building a blueprint similar to this one. And I have a dedicated video to this if you want detailed instructions. Uh, but once you place this blueprint, boom, now your foundation flips over, it's underneath those stairs, and you can put a roof up there instead of a regular floor. and have an upper floor with stairs right up against your wall. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for the latest content from Blad Administrator Gaming. Until next time, I'll see you in the wasteland.